Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to talk about Electret condenser microphones or what I will call ECM. I'll probably say ECM microphones a few times which is saying microphone twice. Forgive me if I do that but I found some that I'm tickled pink with so uh, let's talk about it here. So I like to do field recordings, nature sounds, and things like that on my little recorder here. And one thing I notice, because these microphones are close together, sometimes the stereo image seems squashed a bit with some types of subjects. Like one time I was recording a thunderstorm. I could hear the storm rolling in and hear the thunder at different parts of the sky. But when I went in and played back the file... It sounded kind of crunched down to mono, even though it was a stereo recording. Well, the problem is you have to have some separation when doing field recordings. So I thought about building a microphone myself. I see these, you know, I see these guys that have these multi-thousand dollar field recording setups, thousand dollar microphones, and oh my God, I, I'm not going to spend that kind of money. You know me, I got to do it cheap. I thought about building my own microphone. So I was putting in an order at DigiKey and I said, I'll check out these ECMs. And, you know, they're pretty darn cheap. You can buy the typical ones for a dollar. I know on Amazon you can probably get them for like 30 cents a piece for a pack of them if you buy them in quantity. But I went for uh, a more expensive type. These are from a company called Project Unlimited Incorporated, PUI. And they have their HD series of ECMs, which are, uh, they're just, means they're higher quality ones. I'll put the part number in the description and take a look at the data sheet. First time around, I bought these little guys. These are uh, really nice quality, really impressed with them. They are rated at minus 39 dB, and in a moment I'll explain how they rate their sensitivity. So my next order with DigiKey, I went in there and bought these guys. These are minus 24 dB, and that means when the number is less negative, that means it's more sensitive. So minus 24 dB is a lot more sensitive than minus 39 dB. And another feature of these is their excellent signal to noise ratio. They're rated 80 dB. Your typical ECM will be in the neighborhood of 60 to 70, but these things are 80. So they're high sensitivity and they're low noise. I think will make an ideal use case for using with my little recorder here. Because I can set the recorder at its lowest level and because of the high sensitivity of the microphone, I won't have to bring the level up in post. So end up with a pretty low noise floor. So that's really impressive. So what are some of the benefits of these ECMs? Like I mentioned, they are pretty inexpensive. You know, when you get into the world of microphones, you can spend a lot of money. They are small, as you can see. They have a flat frequency response, or pretty flat anyway. Matter of fact, they are often used in test and measurement microphones, such as for testing loudspeaker responses and things like that. In the world of microphones, they are pretty sensitive, say compared to like a dynamic mic, which might be way down in the minus 75 or even lower range. And they are omnidirectional. There are some more directional types available, but by and large, they come omnidirectional. There's two primary types of ECM capsules that you run across. That's the two and the three wire. And I put a dotted line representing the case and the circuit outside is what you need to connect to it for proper operation. Now they do need a power supply because they have a little JFET amplifier inside of them. Because that tiny little microphone transducer inside of them put out a very high impedance signal on the order of several mega ohms which is difficult to interface with the real world so they include a little amplifier inside to boost the current up 
so it's easy for it to drive. A reasonable cable length and the input impedance of an amplifier, so that's the reason for that. So you have to supply it with a certain voltage and resistance. And most of the ones I looked at, they're rated from 1 to 10 volts, generally specified at 3 volts. So you have your 3 volt source here coming through a resistor. The voltage level in that resistor value is important because it sets the operating point of that little JFET amplifier inside. So if you do change the voltage, you want to make sure you adjust the resistance value. Now to pull the audio signal off of the microphone, we have to decouple that DC from it. So we have a capacitor here, and then it goes on to the preamplifier. The value of this capacitor depends on the input impedance of your amplifier you're going to use it with. So I haven't specified that here. The three-wire configuration is usually a source follower type. These type of mics have lower sensitivity and are able to work in noisier environments. In fact, these little guys here are the three-wire type, and they can handle up to a SPL of 130 dB, where these highly sensitive ones here are only good for 110 dB. So yeah, they're meant for quieter environments, which are ideal for field recording type situations. And before I forget, here is the data sheet of the high sensitivity mic here. Just pause if you want to read this stuff. Characteristics here. This little test setup. Uh, the frequency response. Most of these mics you'll see a little peak up and then a roll off. That might have to do with the wavelength of sound at high frequencies and the size of the mic capsule. I'm not sure, but that's probably why. But they're easy to correct because, you know, there's no wild fluctuations in the frequency response. Okay, so I set up a little circuit here so we can look at the waveforms on the scope. I have a CR2032 battery, which is powering the microphone through some resistors. It's 2K. I have a couple 1Ks in series. And the little capacitor there. And some wires going to the scope. And, of course, the microphone. So let me get you pointed at the oscilloscope. Okay, we got it going here. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Check, check. Yeah, that thing is sensitive. I'm just talking normally here, you know, over a foot from the microphone. And yeah, it's pretty sensitive. Let's see if I can put the scope into roll mode here. Check, 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 check. Look at that. Let's see if I can slow that down a bit. Look at that. See that? What I'm doing, I'm waving my hand about a foot from the microphone and it picks that up. These things, the frequency response, it they pick up bass very well, very low frequencies. You know, that's about five hertz. Me doing that with my hand. Let me bounce on my little exercise ball chair. Look at that. Picks that up. One, two, three, four. That pressure difference in the air, it picks that up. That is pretty amazing. Okay, so what I'm going to try now is to fit these capsules inside this microphone. I don't know where I got this from. I think it came in a box of goodies somebody sent me one time. The microphones are, yeah, they're not bad, but not nearly as good as these so I'll see if they'll fit I think they're the same size now the only problem is I can't put a battery pack on this thing but the good news is this has a switchable plug-in power with the external mic so it essentially takes care of the power supply voltage the resistor and capacitor all done inside this thing so I don't have to do anything externally. So yeah, let me see if these will fit and I'll put them in there. 
Okay, I got this thing open, and I pulled back the rubber cover that was over the microphone, and uh, seems to be the same diameter. I think so, and about the same size. Maybe it's a little bit bigger, but it'll still fit. So I'm thinking here, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So yeah, let me solder those guys in there. Okay, the upgrade is done. So the SoundMax Super Beam is really SoundMax now. I even stole the little fiber dust covers off the old capsules and put them on the new ones. Help prevent dust ingress. And uh, here we go, it's working. Check, check, check. Wow, look how sensitive that is. Check, check, check. If I talk too loud, <laughs> see how the clip warnings turn on. So yeah, these are super sensitive. They'll be perfect for field recording. I bought these little wind jammer things off of eBay. I wonder if I can get them to fit on there. I'm not sure how they go here. There's a little strap there that holds it on. So that'll help reduce wind noise. I got a five pack of them for I don't know how much it was. It wasn't much. As always, I don't pay much. What's this? Not happy. <laughs> I better be happy. Okay. Okay, that was a minor battle to get those things on. I guess you're supposed to pull that over. But there's nothing to hook it on to. But they do seem to hold on there pretty well. So I'll have to uh, check and see how well these things work. See if I get any wind noise. Because that's one thing when you're doing field recording, you always got a little breeze going, and that's one problem I had with this. You always get some wind noise. So we'll see how this works out. Okay, so I'm just hand holding this thing in front of me. It's not really meant to be a vocal mic, but I'm just kind of doing a sound check here. I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. How do you like that wisdom? Okay, I'll kind of just move to the side, check one, two, three, move to the side, move to the side center, quiet. Okay, let's see if I can record some sound from speakers. Okay, we're outside in the backyard, just hand holding the mic. You can see why it's not a good place to do field recordings. Because of the traffic noise from the highway. Though you can hear plenty of bird song.
Okay, so some closing thoughts on this. So this was a budget upgrade to a free mic. So I probably spent a total of $10. About 7 for the two capsules and a couple of these little wind muff things were another 2 or $3, I would guess. So yeah, budget upgrade. So when I played back the sound, the vocals seem kind of bright, but vocal mics tend to not be so bright. Again, this is not really meant for vocals, but I think it will be a very good mic for doing field recording. But I do want to build another mic with wider spacing and its own power supply and a, a sensitivity switch. So... Uh, you know, I can turn it down if needed, if I'm recording something a little louder. So yeah, I think this was a pretty good success here. And I guess I'll wrap it up here. Thanks for watching.